Let's summarize what we've talked about in the last several videos. And we've covered a fair amount of ground in a whole lot of detail. But the underlying concepts are fairly simple. And we started by mentioning that in Python, data are all stored in the form of objects. And we mentioned that objects have an ID, a type, and a value. And we said ID isn't something we pay attention to typically. Type is something that we as programmers do often need to pay some attention to. And we also said that the simplest form of data, the most primitive way to enter data, is in the form of literals. Literals are data that's written directly into the code. Now let's consider a few examples. If we use the double quote sign, write the characters TWO, then the double quote sign, this is a string, or it's identified in Python as an STR. Entering a literal at the interactive prompt, when we hit return, the literal is just echoed back to us. So we see the string 2. If we have the digit 2 enclosed in quotation marks, this is still a string. However, if we write the digit 2 without the surrounding quotation marks, this becomes an integer, or identified within Python as an int. And if we have a number that has a decimal point or uses exponential representation, then this is a float. So floats can have a fractional part. Ints cannot. And let's just spell this out a bit. Let's say strings are collections of characters. And we saw that a string can have no characters. It can be the empty string if we just enclose nothing within quotes. Ints are whole numbers, and they are stored exactly. Whereas floats can have a fractional part. That fractional part may be 0, but it can have a non-zero fractional part. And in general, they are stored approximately with 16 digits of precision, but also we mentioned the type function, and that returns the type of its argument. So for example, if we call the type function and pass it the argument of the string, which consists of the digit 2, it tells us that that is indeed a string. We discussed arithmetic expressions. So for example, 2 times 3, where the asterisk is used for multiplication, plus 4 times 5. When we hit return, we get the result of the evaluation of that expression. Python uses the standard precedence that you would have learned in math class, where multiplication and division have higher precedence than addition or subtraction. So in this case, we would have 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 4 times 5, which is 20, to get 26. Now, when we have multiplication and division, they have equal precedence. It's just evaluated left to right. And the same goes with addition and subtraction. They have equal precedence. And there, the evaluation is done left to right, again, as you would do in a math class. If we want to override the default precedence, we can do that using parentheses. So I recalled that expression using the keyboard shortcut. I'll just enclose the 3 plus 4 in parentheses. And now we should get 2 times the sum of 3 plus 4, which is 7 times 5. Hitting return, we see 2 times 7 times 5 is 70. 
Something that was a little new about arithmetic in Python is that there were two different types of division. First of all, there was regular division, and that preserves the fractional part, and it always returns a float. So it returns a float, or yields a float. But there was a, another type of division. There was also floor division, and this returns a whole number, and that number does not exceed the number that we would obtain with regular division. So it's less than or equal to the number we get from regular division. But I should add to that, it's the greatest number that does not exceed the number that we get from regular division. Now, we also talked about expressions where we mix integers and floats. So, for example, if we had 3 plus 4.0 times 5, the result is a float, and that's because when we mix floats with integers in an expression, the float causes the integers to be converted to floats, and then the final result is a float. We saw that we can construct multi-line expressions using backslashes or parentheses. Similarly, we talked about the construction of multi-line strings, and we said that we can construct multi-line strings, again, using back slashes, or what we called triple quotes. And this is really a double quote or a single quote repeated three times. Finally, we saw that expressions can appear as arguments to functions. So the expression is first evaluated, and then whatever data that results from evaluating that expression is the actual argument. So let's say print 5 plus 7. But we also said before that the print function can take multiple arguments. So let's try putting 6 plus 8 there as well. And now when we hit return, the print function printed the two integer results of those two expressions, and it used the default separator, which is the space character. So that's about it for what we covered in the most recent videos. Again, a lot of detail, but fairly simple concepts.